They were wiped out in many parts of Europe. Now they are slowly starting to spread again. Perhaps even to Germany. One bear has already reached the Bavarian Alps and it's highly likely that another will follow. Bears leave trails. They kill domestic livestock. Some even venture into towns and rifle through garbage. Bears are on the rise. But can we live with them in Europe today? And if so, how? When bears reach adulthood, they are driven away by the older bears. In confrontations like this, the young bear is always the loser. They have to migrate to look for home ranges of their own. Young males in particular may travel long distances. Some of these migrants came from Italy. The Italian Alps are home to around 40 to 50 brown bears. From here, individuals occasionally move north to Switzerland and Austria. The German border is around 300 kilometers away as the crow flies, a distance a bear can cover in just a few days. The last bear to undertake the journey was Bruno. He was shot near Lake Schliersee in Bavaria. Today, Bruno is among the stuffed animals on display at the Museum of Man and Nature in Munich, a reminder of the dramatic events of summer 2006. He was the first wild bear to be sighted in Germany since the last of his kind were exterminated here 170 years ago, a minor sensation. But the initial elation gave way to doubt when Bruno started to look for food, even in the middle of villages. In the end, the Bavarian government declared Bruno a problem bear. His future became a political issue. When attempts to capture him alive failed, the order was given for him to be shot. Bruno's early death turned him into an icon. Soft toys in shops and obituaries in newspapers commemorated the reluctant hero of the animal kingdom. Biologist Alexandra Scholle has a special interest in Bruno's case. The research she is involved in focuses not only on bears, but also on the relationship between bears and humans. The work I do will help ensure that situations such as the slaying of Bruno will not be repeated and that human beings and bears can live side by side without major conflicts. Alexandra works in Romania, the country with the biggest bear population in the European Union, which makes it a good place to study how humans and bears manage as neighbors. There are around 7,000 bears in the Carpathian Mountains, most of them in Romania. The mountain range arcing through Eastern Europe is a perfect habitat for bears, and they naturally move along it. But the Carpathian slopes are dotted with human settlements, where encounters between man and bear are a frequent occurrence. Encounters at garbage bins are particularly common like here, in the small town of Bele Tushnat, on the edge of the Carpathians. It's right on a brown bear migration route. The bears come under cover of darkness almost every night, in search of leftover food. Alexandra is not the only one interested in the nocturnal visitors. They attract quite a few onlookers.
When a bear is scavenging for food in town, it is advisable to keep a distance. Garbage bears often die young, their lives shortened by eating plastic and other waste. The bears can get to the refuse easily here because the bins are not bear-proof. So they have easy access. They are lured by the smell and the prospect of food. It's much easier for them to feed from these refuse bins than to forage for the same amount of food in the forest. Once they've discovered this easy food source, they almost always return. The problem with bears in towns is that encounters are always potentially dangerous. There's no knowing how the bears will react, how the humans will react, and whether the bears will feel provoked. To avoid conflicts, Alexandra and her team set out the next night to capture the bears and return them to the forest. Bait is used to lure the animals into the trap. We've now checked that the door works, that it closes properly. It's activated manually to avoid risk to the bears. We don't want it falling on their head. Will the bears walk into the trap? Another bear approaches. Alexandra's team from the Romanian Life Ursus project and onlookers wait with bated breath. Tushnat is regularly visited at night by 12 bears looking for garbage. But this one is cautious. Despite the mouth-watering bait, he doesn't step into the trap. The researchers will have to try again later, because bears are smart. Shepherds, who have to contend with bears all the time here, know that only too well. There are many remote sheep farms in the Carpathian Mountains, in the heart of bear country. So, of course, bears call by regularly to see if there's a chance of an easy meal. But the shepherds have an effective weapon against predators. Alexandra Scholle explains. The shepherds protect their flocks with dogs like these. They're pretty aggressive, as you can see, but that makes them very effective. Alexandra can learn a lot about bear activity from shepherds like Peter Molnar. Bears are a big problem here. One comes every evening. Only yesterday he snatched a sheep. Bears kill four to five of my sheep a year, and I don't always get the carcasses. The carcass is important. The shepherds need it to get compensation. A few days later, another bear attack. The bear fled into the forest when the farmer discovered it with a slain calf. Alexandra and her Romanian colleagues are also tasked with assessing cases of snatched livestock. If a farmer sustains losses despite protecting his herd of flock with dogs and fences, he's entitled to compensation. It's one way the Romanian authorities try to strengthen acceptance of predators. And it is generally an effective strategy, but difficulties arise when humans are harmed. Living standards here are basic, and the villagers do not want to share the little they have with wild animals. That can sometimes lead to dangerous situations, as in the case of Bela Tamash. I was out with the sheep when the dogs suddenly started to bark. I went to check, pushed my head through the bushes where the noise was coming from, and a bear struck me on the head with its paw. It caught me here. If you ask me, bears should be shot. Bela Tamas frequently sees bears near his flocks, but this was the first time he's been injured. So how dangerous are these animals? 
Brown bears do not go out of their way to attack human beings. Accidents are extremely rare. They occur, for instance, when herders try to defend their livestock. Chance encounters with mushroom hunters or ramblers are usually harmless because bears steer clear of human beings. Generally speaking, bears are fairly well tolerated in Romania because there have always been a large number of them in the country. People don't know any different. To ensure peaceful coexistence between bears and human beings, it is important that bears have lots of space where they can retreat undisturbed. It's also important to learn as much as possible about their needs. Hence, Alexandra's interest in all aspects of bear life, including where they spend the winter. Now, in summer, when the animals are out and about, their winter quarters can be safely inspected. We want to know where the bear caves are so that we can protect the areas from logging and other human activity. We found lots of evidence of mother bears being disturbed by forestry work and abandoning their caves and young. This is very tight, too tight for me. Amazing that a bear can get in here. The researchers take measurements and Alexandra makes a troubling discovery. When I was inspecting the cave, I found something else, scraps of plastic all over the place. Even here, far away from human settlements and civilization, we find garbage in the sleeping chamber of a bear. The scientists make another attempt to catch and relocate the garbage bears. This time a female turns up with young. Bear cubs learn from their mothers where to look for food. So it's particularly important to stop them acquiring a taste for refuse. No one wants a new generation of garbage bears. Will it work this time? If the whole family can be caught, the cubs will have a real chance of leading a perfectly normal life in the forest. But the mother seems skeptical. Success, all the bears are in the trap. Now the scientists have to move fast. Being captured is a stressful experience for the animals, so the mother needs to be quickly sedated. At present, relocation is the only option available for swiftly resolving conflicts between bears and humans. Bears are not cuddly toys. The cubs are about five months old and already so wild that they also need to be sedated. Only when all the animals are asleep can the team start making preparations for the relocation. A wildlife biologist makes sure that none of the bears comes round too early. Now we'll place a GPS collar around the bear's neck. The transmitter on the collar will enable the scientists to track the family's every move. The researchers catch bears only two to three times a year so they take the opportunity to measure and inspect each one. As well as German, Alexandra also speaks Romanian and Hungarian. Both languages are spoken in the area where bears are found. The teeth show that the mother bear is in good health. She just mustn't come round too early. The female's weight is put at around 150 kilos. Adult males 
can be significantly heavier. The three youngsters are still out for the count. They are easier to transport. Mothers and their young are always relocated together so as not to endanger family ties. Now they'll be taken away and released in a wild area three hours drive away. Far from towns and villages. Will the bears cope in their new surroundings, with no garbage bins to raid? In Switzerland, a different strategy is employed, one that avoids the need for relocation altogether. The focus here is on prevention. Forestry engineer Joanna Schönenberger campaigns to get bears back in the Alps for good and she tries to help eliminate fear and prejudice. This is the Münster Valley, and it's the bears' main migration route to Switzerland. The Münster Valley really has turned out to be fabulous bear country. The Münster Valley is in Graubünden, a canton in the far east of Switzerland. Bears are regularly found here migrants from northern Italy. Ten have been recorded since 2005. But even a small number like that makes a mark, because bears cannot resist honey and bee larvae. Beekeeper Renata Bott found out by personal experience. It initially came as quite a shock because we weren't prepared for it. We lost a lot to the first bear. It stole and wrecked 20 hives. Renata uses these small hives to raise new queens. And she makes honey, which attracts bears. After the first losses, Renata had an electric fence built around the hives. It's fairly straightforward, although there are naturally a few tricks to it. The first thing that touches the fence is normally the bear's snout, which is moist and very sensitive. So delivering an electric shock is very effective. A simple system that works very well. Since we've had the fence, there's been no more damage done, but we know that a bear has paid frequent visits. Lone bears also venture close to towns and villages. They're attracted by honey and garbage. Like the Romanians, the Swiss also know that bears can develop a taste for waste. But in the Alps, there's a simple solution. Bear-proof bins are used to avoid conflicts with humans. We need to be prepared for bears, because this is a transit route. Bears are attracted by garbage, so it's very important not to leave it standing around in open containers. It needs to be protected from bears. Joanna hopes that simple precautions can help bears return to the Alps for good. For that to happen, though, there needs to be a huge change in public perception. We see bears as either monsters or cute and cuddly toys. But what would actually help bears most is for them to be perceived as what they are, an alpine animal. <laughs> 
Bears are a part of the Alps, a symbol of the Alps. Could bears become a symbol of the Bavarian Alps again? That would require effective early prevention of conflicts between humans and wildlife, a problem on which conservationists are working wherever bears live. In Romania as well, the end of a long journey for the captured bear family. This is where they are to be released, far away from human beings, deep in the forest of the Putna Vranca Natural Park. Here, the cubs will have a chance not to grow up as garbage bears. The animals have come round. The mother is now very agitated and would defend her young at any cost. So the scientists need to take precautions. A length of wire is used to connect the door of the transport container with the tree. This way, the door doesn't need to be opened manually. When we move off, the door will automatically swing up. No one needs to stand in front of it. To be on the safe side, the researchers take cover. As the pickup rolls forward, the door to freedom opens. The mother and all three cubs have survived the journey unharmed. The stress will even have a positive side effect. The bears have negative associations of capture, transport and human contact and will now be more likely to stay away from settlements. And that's the point of the exercise, to get the bears to stay in the forest. Will they settle in the pristine Carpathian mountains? Or will they migrate back to the town, back to the garbage? Bavaria also anticipates migrating bears. But livestock is hard to protect in the mountainous landscape of the Alps. Berchtesgadener land is one of the areas in Bavaria where bears could turn up. No bears have been sighted here yet, but there is already a special commissioner for bears, Manfred Wölfel. After the experience of Bruno the bear, the Bavarian authorities want to be better prepared. One bear has already reached the Bavarian Alps, and it's highly likely that another will follow. So any steps that help avoid harm or damage are worth taking. Marumano Abruzzese are guardian dogs that have been used for centuries to keep predators away from livestock. So they are not a new discovery. They just sank into oblivion. Sheep farmer Renata Aschauer has rediscovered Marumanos for her flock. Unlike herding dogs, which only make sure that animals don't run away, Maremanos feel part of the flock and defend their brothers and sisters against intruders. Livestock guardian dogs become members of the flock. They guard the sheep like family. Buying these dogs was the best decision we could have made. My flock is now completely relaxed. At present, the Marimanos only protect their flock from foxes and stray dogs. Even so, the system works. It's important to prepare for wolves and bears. Big predators are coming back. Livestock farming, especially extensive grazing, is affected. Attacks occur, and then there is uproar. Far better to minimize damage by precaution and prevention. And prevention can be easy if farmers and herders don't forget traditional practices. No one can say when preventive measures will need to be taken against bears here again. But one thing is certain, the bear population in the Alps is growing, and a bear could migrate north again at any time. Young bears learn a great deal from their mothers, including whether to look for food in the forest or in towns. Their schooling 
lasts up to two and a half years. Then they fend for themselves, and all young bears have to seek their own home range at some point. And that could be in Germany. In Romania, researcher Alexandra Scholle is trying to collect as much data as possible in order to understand brown bears better. The bears are given a GPS collar and the information is beamed straight to the office here via satellite. But no information has yet been received on the whereabouts of the recently relocated bear family. GPS signals can get lost. If we don't get a signal for several days, we go into the area and try to locate the bears by radio telemetry. Are the bears coping? Still no news. And sadly, everything doesn't always go according to plan. Resettlement operations can fail. Last year we had a garbage bear that we resettled 60 kilometers away and she returned 11 days later. We can see on the map how she trekked back to Tuznad from the point where she was released. Alexandra now plans to find out for certain whether the family is still in the Putna Franca Natural Park. Its sprawling forest is an ideal habitat for bears. Although adult bears often range over long distances, mothers with small young tend to stay in one place. Bear cubs are simply not very good on their feet. I'm now trying to locate our small bear family using radio telemetry, and I'm getting a pretty good strong signal. So they are still here. They're here in the forest. They haven't gone back to the town, and I'm very happy about that. So the effort was worthwhile. The example of Romania shows that it is possible for humans and bears to live side by side in Europe even today. And that knowledge could be very important in the Alps because Bruno's brothers will one day reclaim their former habitats and will also migrate to Bavaria. It is only a matter of time. <laughs>